Hey guys, what's going on? I hope everybody is staying safe in this age of coronavirus in the middle of this horrible, horrible pandemic. While there is not much I can do about the pandemic, what I can do for you is pass on some tips around the CKA or Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. I'm recording this video in mid-May 2020. I literally took the CKA exam a few days back. I prepared for the CKA exam using Mumshad's excellent course on Udemy. I highly recommend it. Now on to the tips. First off, the version of Kubernetes in the exam is 1.18. It's not a very big deal, but some of the commands have changed and I want to discuss those with you. I would also like to share some other tips that you might find useful. Let's get started. All right, the first tip is the version of Kubernetes. As of this recording, the version of Kubernetes used in the exam is version 1.18. Now my focus is exclusively on the impact this has on appearing for the certification exam. This point is very important if your experience is only on version 1.17 or you have performed all your practice labs and exercises in version 1.17. Now in version 1.17, you could execute kubectl run with a variation to the restart flag to generate three entirely different Kubernetes objects. Let's look at those. If you executed kubectl run with restart as never, it would give you a pod. If you executed kubectl run with the restart always, you would generate a deployment. And if you executed kubectl run with restart on failure, this would generate a job. Now, if you executed kubectl run without any option, that would generate a deployment. Let's see this in practice. Okay, now I'm on version 1.17. Let me prove it to you by running kubectl version command. And there you go, it says version 1.17. Now let's run all those commands we discussed some time back. First, I'll execute kubectl run with restart never option. And this returns a pod. Next, I'll execute kubectl run with restart equals always flag. And this returns a deployment. Third, I'll execute kubectl run with restart on failure. And this returns a job. Finally, I'll execute kubectl run without any option. And the default option is to create a deployment. Let's move on to version 1.18. Okay, I'm on version 1.18. Let me prove it to you by running kubectl version. And now let's run the same commands we ran earlier. Let's start with kubectl run with restart equals never option. This returns a pod. Let's run it with the restart equals always option. This returns a pod. Let's execute kubectl run with restart on failure option. This returns a pod. Similarly, without any options, it's going to return a pod. So as you can see, no matter what option you use, in version 1.18, you get a pod. Which makes sense because kubectl run should return a pod, right? The second tip is more of a preference, really. What I like to do is use the dry run and the OYAML option along with every command I execute. This way, if there's a typo or some other error, you will know right away. This will allow you to validate that your command works as expected. Now, if you don't remember the exact syntax of the command you're using, you can always use the help option. This will give you a list of all the available options with the command. Let's try this out. All right, I'm back on version 1.18. I'm going to execute kubectl run 
with the dry run and the OYAML option. And this will print out the entire YAML output for me. What I can also do is provide the help option like this. And this will tell me all the options that can be provided with this command. The third tip is this, know where you are. Now read the question very carefully. I bring this up because I have made the mistake of entering the incorrect object name a number of times in the practice labs. Did I make this mistake in the actual exam? I have no way of knowing really. If the question says create pod nginx dash prod and you enter nginx dash prd, guess what? You get it wrong. The other important point here is make sure you're in the right context. While this seems obvious, if you're in a rush, it's easy to make this mistake. Another way you could end up in an incorrect context is when you say SSH to another server and then you sudo to root. When you exit, make sure you come back to the original SSH session. That is why it's so important for you to know where you are. To make things worse, I accidentally exited the original SSH window and ended up wasting precious seconds in the actual exam. When you're in a rush, these things happen. It's very easy to make this mistake. Please be very careful. That is all folks. All the best and I hope you ace the exam. Bye.